The devastation and the death, severe flooding across Europe kills at least 60 people with many more missing. The summer storms that brought tragedy, the desperate search for loved ones and the damage done. Let's take a look at some of today's front pages. The Guardian leading on the catastrophic flooding. This is something we're covering as well here on Breakfast in parts of continental Europe. In mainland Europe, its main picture shows people in Liege in Belgium wading through chest-deep water. Germany's Chancellor and a householder we spoke to in one of the worst affected villages both had the same simple verdict. It's a catastrophe. More than 60 people have been killed and over 70 are missing after severe flooding in Germany and Belgium. The Netherlands, France and Luxembourg have been hit too. We spoke to that victim, Margaret Radamacher, in the village of Schuld, 40 miles south of Cologne. From there, our Europe correspondent, Michelle Clifford, reports. Oh, my God! What is here? Towns and villages across Western Germany have been battered by floodwaters. In Altona, the strength of the surge took away almost all in its path. Oh, nine! Houses, businesses, livelihoods destroyed in a matter of hours. Thousands of people left homeless across this region. Nothing could have prepared the residents of the village of Schuld for what happened here. For the torrent of water that engulfed and destroyed their properties. The water has receded now, but has left much of the area in ruins. In home after home, they are clearing up and trying to take in the scale of the damage. How far the, did the water come? Uh, this year, so. Margaret Radamacher takes us into the house she's lived in for over 16 years. Also, it's an absolute catastrophe. For the Dorf Schultz. There are many people who've been affected. Many houses don't exist. The full extent isn't yet known. Floodwater shattered building after building in Schultz. Residents have lost their lives, and power failures overnight left many frantically trying to contact their relatives. Andreas Muller had to wait hours to learn his in-laws were safe. Overnight they were upstairs and it was dark because there was no, um, um, no light, no, st no uh, power. And um, yeah, there was also no phone connection, so we tried to get reach them all night and it was very hard um, to get them. The house they've lived in most of their lives is uninhabitable. Everything on the ground floor destroyed and every neighbour around them is confronted by the same awful reality. People here had expected flooding but say they never imagined the sheer force of the water that burst through their village, destroying homes and businesses and leaving hundreds here without power, gas, electricity and clean water. But the rain and the floods have impacted way beyond this corner of Germany. Homes in eastern Belgium are also underwater after record levels of rain. Some properties are now too dangerous to stay in. Luckily, I have my sister, but now we've been told that our house could collapse and so we've had to leave. Letitia Collins shows us how far the water rose inside her property in Envisal. Eventually, her family were forced to leave. Around 4 a.m., the water started rising from over there. I told my partner and we were able to move the car out and quickly move a few things upstairs. But then we had to go as the waters rose so quickly inside the house. As we left, the water was up to here on me. Roads and transport links have been affected across a wide area. And with already sodden ground, the worry is about more rain to come and what that could mean for many thousands of people. Michelle Clifford, Sky News, Germany. Well, the storms which have caused so much devastation are part of a weather system which first caused flash flooding in the UK earlier this week. From America to Europe and Russia, extreme weather is breaking records. Our science correspondent, Thomas Moore, has this assessment now of what's behind these weather events. It's been an extraordinarily wet start to July in Western and Central Europe. In the Netherlands, 10 centimetres of rain fell on the area around Maastricht in two days, more than the region would normally expect over the whole of the summer. In Luxembourg City, the streets were submerged after 80 litres of rain fell on every square metre in just one day. 
and in West London on Monday, thunderstorms dumped 4.8 centimetres of rain, making it the wettest day since 1983. So what's going on? Well, the prolonged rain has been caused by a low-pressure system that's moving across central Europe. NASA says there's also been a persistent northward bulge in the polar jet stream over Scandinavia this year that has resulted in record June temperatures in Helsinki in Finland and Moscow. The shift has also brought tropical temperatures to Arctic Siberia, with satellite images showing the surface in some spots reached 48 degrees. Meanwhile, the western states in the USA are suffering the second extreme heat wave of the summer, with the temperature in the town of Stovepipe Wells in California not falling below 42 degrees overnight, the highest daily minimum ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere. We've seen heat waves, you know, right across the world, in fact, uh, droughts in one location. And because they're all so much more intense, we, we can see that the atmosphere is energetic and possibly more energetic than we're predicting it in our climate models. And that's the thing that is really worrying. Scientists at Oxford University's World Weather Attribution Unit have looked at the West Coast heat wave in June that saw the Canadian town of Lytton reach 49.6 degrees. They say that was a one in 1,000 year event made two degrees warmer by climate change. By the 2040s, global warming will have reached the point where a similar heat wave is likely to occur every five to 10 years. A hotter atmosphere is already bringing more extreme weather more often and it's only going to get worse.